China continues combat training around Taiwan. FBI warns against using public phone charging stations. US and Philippines follow Taiwan drills with biggest exercises yet. UK bosses try to lure Gen Z workers with early finish Fridays. Macron criticized for taking isolate stance on Taiwan. India ignores angry China and launches villages program. Britain to encourage smokers to swap cigarettes for vapes. The Super Mario Brothers movie smashes all records. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Wednesday, April 12th, and here are your top stories. Although China said on Monday night that the drills had ended, state television said that several warships continue to carry out actual combat training in the waters around Taiwan to test the organizational and command capabilities of commanders at all levels and the combat effectiveness of weapons and equipment. Taiwan's defense ministry said it has spotted nine Chinese ships and 26 aircraft, including J-16 and Su-30 fighters, carrying out combat readiness patrols around Taiwan late Tuesday morning. China's reports said the warship Shuzhou performed combat readiness patrol missions in the waters to Taiwan's east, conducting air defense and anti-missile training, while in another unspecified area, the Xi'an conducted over-the-horizon missile training. Taiwan's defense ministry said Taiwan's air force, navy, and shore-based missile crews are closely monitoring and responding. Taiwan's government has repeatedly denounced the drills, but said it will not escalate or provoke. The U.S. FBI recently warned consumers against using free public charging stations, saying crooks have managed to hijack public chargers that can infect devices with malware or software that can give hackers access to your phone, tablet, or computer. FBI Denver tweeted, avoid using free charging stations in airports, hotels, or shopping centers. Bad actors have figured out ways to use public USB ports to introduce malware and monitoring software onto devices. Carry your own charger and USB cord and use an electrical outlet instead. Mark Reebe, two minutes is all they need. It's called juice jacking. The FBI's Denver field office said the message was meant as an advisory and that there was no specific case that prompted it. The FBI offers similar guidance on its website to avoid public chargers. The bulletin didn't point to any recent instances of consumer harm from juice jacking. Consumer devices with compromised USB cables can be hijacked through software that can then siphon off usernames and passwords. The FCC has also warned about juice jacking, as the malware loading scheme is known, since 2021. The U.S. and the Philippines kicked off the largest version of their flagship military exercise in more than 30 years on Tuesday, a high-profile display of their renewed alliance that comes just a day after China was set to conclude its own drills around Taiwan. The annual Bali Katan exercise will focus on developing maritime security and amphibious operations and will include light fire training at a time the two nations are seeking to push back against Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. According to the U.S. Embassy in Manila, the presence of more than 17,600 military personnel almost doubles last year's level. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin will meet their Philippine counterparts in Washington on Tuesday, seeking to strengthen collaboration in the Indo-Pacific region. Manila has vowed to pursue collective defense efforts with Washington around the South China Sea in a bid to counter a record number of Chinese incursions in disputed waters. UK employers desperate to recruit and retain Gen Z workers are increasingly offering early finish Fridays in a bid to fill vacant roles amid an ongoing staff shortage crisis. Online jobs portal Azuna has seen a sharp increase in postings offering shorter days on Friday, effectively meaning workers can start their weekends a few hours earlier. There were 1,426 job ads on the site, citing early finish Friday this March, compared to only 583 in the same month five years earlier, before the COVID-19 pandemic upended working life. According to Adzuna, the perk appears to be targeted at junior staff, in roles with salaries between £20,000 and £40,000, or $50,000. The company found it's more prominent in certain industries, with Adzuna's live ads showing 348 early finish Friday jobs in engineering as of April 3. 
There were 207 similar perks offered for sales jobs and 156 in information technology roles. Companies have been trialing a variety of measures, including a four-day work week, to attract staff in the face of record vacancies. French President Emmanuel Macron has caused a stir by saying Europe has no interest in accelerating the conflict in Taiwan and should become a third pole independent of both Washington and Beijing. Political actors on both sides of the Atlantic criticized the president's position as being too accommodating of China. German MP for the Bundestag's Foreign Committee, Norbert Rodigan, said in a tweet that Macron had managed to turn his China trip into a PR coup for Xi and a foreign policy disaster for Europe. Emmanuel Macron has had a meeting with the Chinese president, of which he thinks that they should work a little closer together, cuddles and all. This... U.S. Senator Marco Rubio said, if Europe doesn't pick sides between the U.S. and China over Taiwan, then maybe we shouldn't be picking sides either on Ukraine. Moitaba Rahman, the head of Europe at the research firm Eurasia Group, said the timing of Macron's latest comments was poor. To make these remarks as Chinese military exercises encircled Taiwan, and just after his state visit to China, was a mistake. It will be interpreted as appeasement of Beijing and a green light to Chinese aggression. On Monday, India's Home Minister visited Arunachal Pradesh, which is a Himalayan frontier state that China claims as part of its territory, to launch a 48 billion rupee development scheme he said would add to the security of the unmarked border. Home Minister Amit Shah said the program, which will cover nearly 3,000 villages in four states and one federally administered territory on the Chinese frontier, was aimed at helping reverse migration out of border areas. Shah said the Vibrant Villages program he launched on Monday would provide facilities such as banking, power, cooking gas, jobs, physical and digital connectivity to what he called the first village of India. A map released last week showed the 11 places renamed by China as being within Zhangnan, or Southern Tibet in Chinese, with Arunachal Pradesh included in Southern Tibet. India also rejected the renaming by China of 11 places, including five mountains, in Arunachal Pradesh. The British government said on Tuesday up to one million smokers will be encouraged to swap cigarettes for vapes, with pregnant women offer financial incentives to make the change in what will be a work first. The Department of Health said under the scheme, almost one in five smokers will be given a vape, an e-cigarette, starter kit along with support to help quit smoking. Pregnant women will also be offered vouchers to help them kick the habit. In fact, Britain will provide 1 million vaping starter kits in order to reduce tobacco consumption. The British government's target is to reduce the number of smokers to 5% or less of the population from 13% now. The Doe said although worldwide average smoking rates are higher than in Britain, tobacco is still the highest preventable cause of death and illness in the country. However, vaping has its critics and health officials have warned its popularity among children as exposing them to chemicals whose long-term effects are unclear. Health service figures show 9% of 11- to 15-year-olds in Britain had used e-cigarettes in 2021. Despite negative reviews, the Super Mario Bros. movie is already a smash hit. According to studio estimates on Sunday, the animated offering from Universal and Illumination has broken box office records, scoring the most successful global opening of all time for an animated film. It powered up with $204.6 million in its first five days, including $146.4 million over the weekend with an estimated $173 million in international earnings and a global total of $377 million. The film broke records for video game adaptations and animated films. Its global total also makes it the biggest opening of 2023. It's also a record for Illumination, the animation shop behind the successful Minions franchise, which has made over $5 billion from its 13 films. 
senior media analyst for Comsca, Paul Dergarabedian, said, $377 million worldwide is just astounding and a testament to how important outside of the home activities are for families. Is it any good? The media and the critics said, no, no, it's not. Still, all the generally negative press doesn't seem to have deterred moviegoers. Let's take a look at today's vocabulary from the news of early Finnish Fridays. Number one, desperate. 非常想要的, 渴望的. I was absolutely desperate to see her. Number two, retain. 保持持有保留继续拥有. She retained her tennis title for the third year. Number three, in a bid to do something. 为了, the government has already closed down two newspapers in a bid to silence its critics. Number four, upend. 放倒, 颠倒, 使颠倒. The bicycle lay upended in a ditch. And that's all for today's Fun Day News. Be sure to click the link below and join Fun Day for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.